Okay, so in this section, right, it's about entry trigger. So let's do a quick recap. What you've learned so far? So so far, you've learned about market structure. It tells you what to do. Should you be looking for buying opportunities, selling opportunities, or to stay out of the markets? There we covered about area of value. There are two things we covered in area of value: uh, support resistance and moving average. And these are tools that you can use, right, to tell you know where to buy or sell. So market structure tells you what to do. Area of value tells you where to buy. Or sell. And now we're moving to the third component, entry trigger. This tells you when to buy or sell. Okay, so entry trigger, there are many ways, you know, you can use, there are many tools out there to help you time the market. But what I find personally to be very useful is candlestick patterns. And I want to, you know, dive deeper into this section since I find it so useful. So what is candlestick patterns? So candlestick patterns is a method of reading a price chart. Of course, it's not the only way. You have bar chart, you have line chart, you have all the different types of chart out there. So candlestick pattern is just one of the methods to read a price chart and it's, I would say, one of the more popular approaches. So how do you actually read a candlestick pattern? One thing to understand is that there is four data points for every candlestick pattern. You have the opening price, the closing price, and the high and low of the session. So if your candlestick pattern is, let's say, on the one hour time frame, then what you'll see is that the highest price point over the, over the last one hour. And the low is the lowest price point over the past one hour. So a little bit more about candlestick patterns is that you can use it to trade different time frames. So for example, if you see a candlestick pattern on the one hour time frame, it simply means that on a one hour time frame, every one hour, a new candle is formed. If it's on a four hour time frame, every new candle is formed every four hours. And if you're on a daily time frame, one candle is formed every single day. Same for the weekly, monthly, same concept. So now let me explain, you know, uh, how do you actually read a candlestick pattern? So you'll see primarily two types of candlestick pattern. One is green and one is red. But let's talk about the green one first. So remember I said that there are four data points. So how do you actually, you know, uh, know where are the four data points? So very simple. For a green candle, it simply means, right, that the price has closed above, right, the opening price. So let's say this is like a, a one-hour candle. Okay, let's say this is a one-hour candle. So what it tells you that the price, right, has close right higher than where it was one hour ago so that's why it's green right it has closed higher you know compared to where it was at the opening price one hour ago so that's why it's green so the opening price will be at the, here and the closing price will be here this is the only way for the closing price to be above the opening price the closing price has to be higher than it so that's why it's green it's bullish so the opening price once, once again is it over here at this line and over here is the closing price we'll add in some numbers later on so you can see how it all makes sense so what about here? This simply means it's the highest price point over the last one hour, if you're on the one hour time frame. And this is the lowest price the market has went, right? During the past one hour, one hour, right? This is the lowest price point. So this is the high, highest price point over the past one hour, and the lowest price point over the past one hour. Of course, if we change this to a different time frame, to the eight hour time frame, the daily, daily time frame, concept is the same. So let's say we try the weekly time frame. Let's ignore the one hour, the weekly time frame. So what does it mean? It, it means that at this price point of the candle, that is the highest price point, right? Over the week, over the past one week. And this is the lowest price point over the past one week over here. And this is the opening price of the week and this is the closing price of the week. So same, same concept. So now what about red candle? So this is just the inverse. So if you recall, this over here was the closing and this is the opening. So the closing price is higher than the opening price. That's why it's bullish. That's why it's green. But for a red candle, it simply means that the closing price is below the opening price. I repeat, right? The closing price is below the opening price for a red bearish candle. So your closing price has to be here. See? And over here is your opening price. That's the only way, right, for this candle to close lower is if the closing price is below the opening price. And likewise, over here is the highs and this is the lows. Exactly the same concept. So if I were to, you know, piece all this together, you will have a chart that looks like this. Okay, this is what I just said earlier. So a little bit more uh, so-called technical definition if you want. So we call this color thing the body. And this, this line over here, we call this the, the upper wick or upper shadow, whichever you, you know, whichever term that you, you prefer. There's no right or wrong over here. And this is what we call the lower wick or lower shadow. Okay, so this is how you read a candlestick pattern. Now, moving on, let us let me sh let me share with you how it looks like right, on a real chart and how you interpret it. So I'm going to look at this uh, 
currency pair let's look at the daily time frame this is aussie against the japanese yen i'm going to zoom in so you can see what so we are all on the same page so you can see over here i am going to i want you to pay attention to these numbers over here right this is the opening price this is the highest price point over the last one day this is the lowest price point over the past one day and this is the closing price and this is the percentage change right in pips so this number will move right depending where my mouse cursor is so pay attention so let's look at the most recent one this candle here how do we interpret this so let's interpret this together one by one so for this candle it tells you that this market opened at 83.589 so it opened at this price point 83.589 the highest price point for the day is 83.788 which is over here 83.788 the low of the day is 83.036, which is here. The low of the day, 83.036. And the closing price for this, this, uh, this market for this day is 83.529, which is at this price point over here. Does it make sense? So let's do one more example. How about the dollar against the Japanese yen? Okay, now we have a green candle. So same, same thing, right? For this market, the opening price, what does it say? 109.248. This is the opening price, 109.248. Where is the highest price point for the day? 109.96. 109.96. Where is the lowest price point for the day? 109.193. Over here, 109.193. And where is the closing price for the day? 109.614. 109.614. And along the way, you will probably see some candles where they are missing a body. Man, that candle is weird, Rainer. Where's the body? So this is usually when your opening and closing price are too near one another where you get a very, almost a non-existent body candle like this one here. Look at this, right? Almost a non-existent body. So yeah, it happens, especially when the opening price and the closing price are very near each other. So if you have a look at this, right? Uh, let me just see what the numbers are so you, you don't freak out. <laughs> so for this candle, the opening price uh, opening price for this is 103.76 and the closing price is 103.75 okay so this is why you can see they are just like a 3 pipette difference 0 0.3 pips difference so that's why their body is almost non-existent so this is how you actually read a, a Japanese candlestick chart so moving on right so now you know the basics right how do you actually you know or rather how do you use it to time your entry so to do that right you want to focus right, or learn a few patterns right to help you do so and there are two patterns or maybe four patterns that i want to share with you so first let's talk about the bullish reversal candlestick pattern and understand you know what is it how it works and the story behind it so the first pattern that i want to share with you is what we call a hammer so different candlestick patterns they have different names they have hammer harami engulfing you know dark cloud cover and stuff like that so there's really 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 a lot out there but i'm not going to teach you everything because it's not needed right as you progress and learn and grow as a trader you realize that hey most of these patterns are pretty much a variation of one another so i'm going to share with you the most common variations the most useful ones and after which you can go on and explore the other you know patterns out there and of course the basics i've already taught you so you can just you know stack upon what you've learned and to to learn even more so first one is what i call or not i call it right people you know others out there the technicians right, call it a hammer so let's understand what hammer is about so again where is the opening price price open over here where is the closing price for a green candle the closing price has to be above the opening price so it's here where is the high of the day over here so let's assume that this is a daily candle right the high of the day is here and the low of the day is over here so what's the story of this hammer so it's quite interesting right you can imagine right that for the, when the market opened over here the sellers they were in control like out of the gate right they're like barbarians you know running out of the gates and they pushed the market they pushed the price down near the lows of the day then when all the buyers, they're all defeated, all right? Then somehow or other, there's like one Thor, one Captain America from the middle of nowhere shouted, you know, Avengers assemble! And then they all unite and, you know, push the price up all the way up higher, finally closing near the highs of the day. So you can imagine that this kind of tug of war between the buyers and sellers, right? When market opened, sellers came in, you know, smash and, you know, uh, uh, push the price all the way down. Suddenly, sometimes in the middle of the day, the buyers, they woke up, right? They assemble, they unite and they push the market all the way up to close near the highs. Of the day so this tells you that hey you know the buyers are now in control that's why they managed to push the price right push the price all the way near the highs of the day and this is what we call a hammer because it kind of looked like a, a hammer <laughs> okay so another another pattern that's worth uh, learning is what we call a bullish engulfing pattern so the story is very similar but this time around it's expressed right using two candles so for this one over here this is a red bearish candle so you can see that the sellers took control and close the price right near the lows of the day so the buyers were all defeated ah you know injured oh really painful 
the next day, right, somehow the, the, the bias, they got revived, right, they grew stronger, right, maybe they put, you know, a little bit too much steroids in their body or or whatsoever, take some magic potion and they, they push the price, right, to close near the highs of the day once again. So they pretty much has overwhelmed, right, the selling pressure of the previous day. How do I know that? Because you can see that the range of the candle or the range of the body over here was previous, previously from this opening price to this closing price. But the next day, it opened low and closed even higher than the previous day opening price. So you can see that the buyers has even overwhelmed, right, the, the sellers, right, by a li even a little bit more. So this is what we call a bullish engulfing pattern. So next one, the opposite of uh, bullish candlestick patterns, right, this is what we call the bearish reversal candlestick pattern. So there are two as well. This one is called a shooting star. So this is actually the inverse of a hammer. I'll just explain the story behind this. So since you know it's a red color candle, opening price is here, closing price is here. So what happened, right? So you can see that when the day started, right, let's say this is a daily candle, buyers push the price all the way up this higher and mark this highs for the day. And then sell suddenly right, the sellers came in and you know took control and push the price near the lows of the day, finally closing near the lows of the day. Right, so the buyers were, you know, when the market just opened, oh, really excited, woohoo, you know, let's you know, push the price up higher. Then somehow, middle of the day, you know, things got depressed, you know, maybe, you know, he, he got reminded of his ex-girlfriend item, this ex-sweater, oh, let me throw this sweater, let me sell, sell, sell everything. And then the market collapsed and sell, sold off and nearly pretty much closed near the lows of the day. So you can see that initially, buyers, they had the upper hand, but they were overwhelmed by the sellers, right, towards the end of the day. So this is where you get a shooting star. So for this bearish engulfing pattern, right, it's pretty much a uh, same uh, similar story. So we can see for the first candle, it is bullish, right? Buyers were happy, woohoo, right? Celebrate, right? They have closed near the highs of the day. But for the second day, right, the sellers took control and pushed the price, right, all the way down lower, exceeding even below the lows of the previous day and the and even the opening price of the previous day. They closed near the lows over here. So we can see that the buyers, once again, they were defeated. Ah, you know, you know, injured, hospitalized, and they'll never, I, won't, I don't want to say <laughs> never to recover because in the market, it always, just, always goes up, goes down. So for now, I would say the sellers has temporarily won the war. Okay, for now. So let me share with you a, a few uh, charts, right? So you know how this looks like on the chart. And you can see that, you know, all the different variations of it out there. So let me point out to you the first one. Let's have a look at, how about dollar against the Japanese yen. So you can see over here, this one looks something like a, in between a shooting star and a bearish engulfing pattern. Then uh, we have this one as well, more of a shooting star. If you look at other example, like Euro against the USD, you can see over here, this is similar to shooting star, but the difference is the body of the candle is green. So again, when you trade the markets, right, it doesn't mean that it has to be a textbook example, it has to be red, to be red color. Sometimes it can be green as well, but the meaning is pretty much the same because if you look at this, right, this is the price rejection that you have seen, right? The buyers tried to push the price up higher, but got overwhelmed by the sellers and finally closed, right, near the lows, near the opening, opening price of the day. Over here, you have a bearish engulfing pattern, right? Look at how this range of the candle has, you know, uh, overcome, right, the body of the previous uh, day. And uh, this is a bullish engulfing pattern. Notice how the body of this candle has, you know, uh, is larger, right, and close, right, even above the highs and the opening price of the previous day. This is a bullish engulfing pattern. And then this is another bearish engulfing pattern. And, and yeah, so later we'll look at some chart examples, uh, you know, in terms of the... Uh, the market structure, area of value, entry trigger, and stuff like that. But for now, let's do a quick recap. So I know I've covered a lot. So number one, remember, market structure, it tells you what to do. Should you be looking for buying opportunities, selling opportunities, or to stay out of the markets? Then we have area of value, which tells you, you know, where to enter a trade, you know, where. And finally, the thing that we just covered, entry trigger, tells you when to enter a trade. And by the way, if you're enjoying this training so far, smash the thumbs up button. If you are not, then hit subscribe and then smash the thumbs up button.